Let's talk about the word for just a minute. The word ascension, big um, $100 word. It just means going up. I know we don't have kings in America. At least we're not supposed to. But if you had a king with a throne and the king was to ascend to the throne, what you mean by ascension is not that the king geographically relocated from under the throne to on top of the throne. You don't mean that. Because if you meant that, then anyone could ascend to the throne of England. What you mean is that the king ascended and that he changed his relationship to every single citizen in the kingdom. He changed his relationship. He inherited power and authority, and that's what it means to ascend. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he changed his relationship that he had, not only with you and I, but literally with the whole universe. He ascended into heaven. And it's not heavens, okay? When the Bible talks about heavens, it just means sky, uh, not just sky, but literally like the whole universe, okay? So Jesus didn't ascend to the heavens. It wasn't space travel. Jesus isn't hanging out on, you know, the planet Pluto or anything like that, uh, regardless of what that guy on the internet said. That's not what's going on. He ascended into heaven, singular, another realm, not part of this creation. He's in heaven where God is. Um, the, I think the best way to understand that, the way that God relates to us on this earth is not the way that a man in the attic relates to people on the first floor. That's not what's going on. The way that God relates to us when Jesus came to earth is, is it's almost like an author relates to the characters in his novel. The only way that we would ever know anything about the author, the only way that we would ever know anything about God is if God chose to write himself into the story. Okay? If you had a playwright and you're writing a play, you could write yourself in as the author so that the characters of the play come to know you. And that's exactly what we celebrate at Christmas. Christmas is the most glorious display of God writing himself in to his story. He wrote himself into the creation. So the Son of God took on flesh he identified with us in our humanity. He knows what it's like to be tired. He knows what it's like to have relational tension. He knows what it's like to lose someone that he, that he loved very much. He knows what it's like to cry. He knows what it's like to use the bathroom. He knows what it's like to hold it when you have to. <laughs> he knows all of those things. Why? Because God chose to write himself in. And he chose to write himself in because we would never know God, we would never have God, we would never understand God to the degree that we could and should know and understand God unless he had chosen to write himself in and become fully human. He did it in love and he, and he did it because that's the only way that he could relate to us so that we know him and understand him. So you think about Christmas. Jesus Christ comes to earth so that we could have and know God in a way that we could never have him before. Because of sin entering into the world, the presence of God was lost. Fellowship with God was, uh, was removed from us. And through the life and death of Jesus Christ, him dying on the cross, paying the penalty for our sin, he broke the power of sin, he broke the power of death, he, he, uh, he allowed us access into the presence of God and fellowship with God was granted through faith in Christ. And the ascension of Jesus is basically a way of guaranteeing and securing that the presence of Jesus Christ would never be lost. Jesus, uh, or Christmas is about Emmanuel, God with us. The ascension is the most magnificent display of Emmanuel that the world has ever seen because through the ascension, the presence of Jesus Christ, fellowship with God, is never lost. Do you see that? Jesus came to earth so that we could have God. He ascended into heaven so that we would never lose him. That's the significance of the ascension. Jesus ascended into heaven. He, God wrote himself in to the story. Uh, you can see this in the Gospels, um, in, in the Gospel of John, when Jesus has uh, resurrected. He's hanging out with his disciples, and uh, you remember that Mary was trying to hold on to Jesus, and Jesus tells Mary, uh, if you want the verse, it's John 20, 17. John 20, 17. Uh, Jesus says to Mary, Mary, you can't touch me. And at first glance, you're like, well, what's going to happen? You know, is he, Jesus, an alien? Uh, is Mary going to melt if she touches Jesus? Is he nuclear? Does he have the flu? I mean, why is Jesus saying, don't touch me? And, it, and it's not because that she was going to melt. It's, it's not any of those things because Jesus allows Thomas to touch him. There's other moments where people 
touched the Lord Jesus Christ, so it's not anything weird like that. Jesus was saying to Mary, Mary, you don't understand. You can't touch me because I haven't ascended. I haven't gone to be with the Father because if and when I ascend, when I go up, it doesn't matter if they lock you into a dungeon. It doesn't matter if you're as far removed from me as you've ever been. I'm gonna be there. My presence will be deeply felt because if and when I ascend who I am, what I've done, my presence will be catapulted into the universe. It'll be applied globally, universe-wide. So you've gotta let me go. The ascension of Jesus is not the absence of Jesus. It's the intense magnification of his presence. It's not the loss of his leadership, intimacy, and love. It's the intensification of it. That's what he's telling Mary. And that's why he had to ascend. And when you get it, when it comes inside of you, when you embrace the power of it, it changes your life forever. When you become aware that the presence of Jesus Christ is just as real to me as it was to those first apostles, and it'll change you. When you enter into difficult conversations, when you're in Africa in a very challenging climate where your life is at stake, when, when you're engaged in, a, in conversations about the gospel and threatening situations, those tense moments, hard decisions, when you become aware that the presence of Jesus Christ isn't just up there away from me, it's not just back then in history, but it's actually right here inside of me through his Holy Spirit, then it changes you. It gives you boldness. It gives you confidence. It gives you wisdom. It enables you to do things you otherwise wouldn't do. That's the power of the ascension. 